First of all, good morning to you. Thanks for being with us. And, and how jacked have you been to watch the World Baseball Classic? Uh, good morning. And you might notice from my wardrobe, I've been very excited by the brand of baseball that we've been seeing. And, you know, it's I love meaningful baseball, and I don't think there's really a debate. It could go on. It can rage on on Twitter all it wants to. But these have been fun games. The crowds have been electric. The players are obviously into it. And when everybody's bought in like that, it really comes through the television set, and I'm sure is one of the most fun atmospheres you can be in as a fan physically there in Miami or anywhere else. Some of these games were played. It looked like the global spectacle that baseball has been wanting to put together here that we haven't seen since 2017 has been delivering so far. All right, Grant, so you cover the Braves. So I'm trying to think if we've seen any big performances from Braves players. I saw Ronald Acuna Jr. in the the dugout for, what was it, Team Venezuela? Has mm -hmm. any Braves uh, players been doing big things in the WBC? Well, the Braves only had a handful of guys that were involved. Chadwick Trump played for the Kingdom of the Netherlands. He's kind of a backup organizational catcher, has had a little bit of big league time. But the, the crown jewel of the Braves is obviously Ronald Acuna Jr., he started slowly in the WBC, but by the time they got to those last couple of games, you started to see Ronald doing the things that he does. And uh, then Eddie Rosario was playing for Team Puerto Rico, and he had, I think, a, a very nice WBC and is hitting the ball very hard this year. He had a lost year last year because of eye surgery and everything that went with that. So seeing those two guys get some meaningful and important at-bats, I talked to Braves manager Brian Snicker about this at spring training. He felt like that would be a net positive, getting them ready for the season, because how can you mock up those kind of at-bats in spring training? Spoiler alert, you can't. So both of those guys healthy, coming home, getting back in the Braves lineup. Rosario already did yesterday, and Ronald should be back in there on Thursday. Well, Grant, you mentioned Brian Snicker, and I was going to ask you about him. And, and, and as we all know, managing is such a huge part of this sport. And it feels like when it comes to Brian Snicker, he really is the perfect fit for this roster. He has the right demeanor for this club. He really does. And while you might look at somebody who's had four and a half decades in baseball and think, okay, well, this is an old timer. This is an old school guy. He's going to do things the old school way. He's going to kind of push aside some of the things that have really permeated the game in the last 15 or 20 years, as far as analytics and all those things are concerned. It couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, he dove in wanting to learn more and more and more and look at ways in which the Braves could make themselves from a good team to a great team. And that has been something I think the Braves have done extremely well. We'll see what happens with all the shifts not being available anymore because the Braves were one of the teams that utilized that the most. But in terms of the X's and O's for managing, we can nitpick a lot of different moves over the course of the season. No manager is going to get it right all the time. But in terms of the leadership, the steady hand, and the approach to keep this club on the quote-unquote even keel that we heard all the way back to the Bobby Cox days, which Brian Snitker's under that tree, they've got the guy that they need. And I think that players, as I've heard many, many times, like he, you know he has that belief in you. And you want to go out there and perform, and you're going to run through a brick wall for that guy. And the Braves have run through a few brick walls in the last five years to get themselves from a rebuild to a world champion. And they'd like to do it again. So I like having the local guys come on and talk about the teams because you get a good thermometer for the fan base and the feeling entering the season. So we look at the roster, uh, plenty of great players, a great pitching staff. Uh, you've got some great hitters. And also the X factor that the ownership is going to go out and get whoever they need to get when it comes to the trade deadline. So what is the thermometer for Braves fans going into the season? I think we've seen that not only do the Braves have an excellent team constructed come opening day more times than not, but they'll also go out and make the trades that they need to. The biggest and brightest example of that being 2021 when they had to rebuild the outfield, which I'm sure Alex Anthopoulos wouldn't mind never having to do again, but he will go out there and make those moves. Even last year, he went out and got Rysel Iglesias, didn't have to get into the pitching market to pay another closer, already had that guy in place. And then he went out and kind of went off the board, I think, with getting Sean Murphy, a gold glove catcher, to add to this club, immediately extending him. That you know continues the string of players who have been locked into Atlanta for basically the rest of this decade. And now you can continue to build around those guys. Ronald Acuna Jr., Ozzy Albies, Matt Olson, Austin Riley. I mean, these are just some of the guys that are locked in. Spencer Strider, Michael Harris, last year they exploded onto the scene. They signed extensions. There's a lot of excitement surrounding this club, and for good reason. And when they do have question marks, and the departure of Dansby Swanson certainly opened up one of those at shortstop, they seem to find ways sooner than later to fill that hole or to find a plan that's going to work for them. And I would anticipate they do that again, even if shortstop hasn't necessarily played out the way that we thought it would in spring training with the optioning of Vaughn Grissom and Braden Shoemake yesterday. 
We're talking with Grant McCauley, Rays reporter for 92.9 The Game in Atlanta, also host of the From the Diamond podcast. Follow him on Twitter at Grant McCauley. So I was going to ask you about Dansby Swanson, and and that's sort of still in flux. What do you anticipate happening there? And not necessarily that it's a hole, because you mentioned how strong that Atlanta lineup is top to bottom, but that was certainly a a big loss during the offseason. What happens there at short? Yeah, no two ways about that. Dansby Swanson was a big part of the winning that the Braves did beginning in 2018 to get this run of five division titles started. And he had some big hits in that World Series, some moments that are going to play over and over and over and over on the highlight reels for a lot of Braves fans. But when Dansby left and got the offer that he did from the Cubs, it appeared that his valuation, and for good reason, he played to get to free agency and he should be out there getting the biggest deal that he can. And the club's valuation, even when he decided, hey, maybe I'll take a little bit less, it wasn't enough to get this deal done. But internally you had Vaughn Grissom who got some time in the big leagues last year you thought that would probably be the guy that they would go with Braden Shoemake who's a former first round pick kind of opened some eyes in spring training Uh, but sooner or later you know you've got to make a decision and the Braves actually made it sooner than I thought they would optioning both those guys out they got Orlando Arcia who played every day for the Brewers for a while at least opening the season as the big league shortstop I don't know if he's going to hold on to that job all season long but it was kind of a surprising move for a lot of us that were close to the team and that talked to various team officials, Vaughn Grissom, Ron Washington, who worked with Vaughn over the course of the offseason. A little bit of a surprising move there, though. But I feel like the Braves are set up as far as a leadership standpoint is concerned. Their lineup is very well constructed. You're not asking the shortstop to come in and carry the team. But there will be a difference between what they were getting from Dansby Swanson and what they're going to be getting to start the season here in 2023. Grant, what do you expect from Spencer Strider this year? Last year, an electric factory had 202 strikeouts and just 131 innings of work. Do you think that this is sustainable for Spencer Strider? I do. I expect a lot more strikeouts as well. And while this is a guy that has a big fastball that kind of you know goes with his, I wouldn't say larger than life persona, but it's a pretty big one at this point. I mean, he swapped his number to 99 because he's a big Ricky Vaughn fan. And that guy was known for throwing a lot of fastballs as well. But <laughs> with, with Spencer Strider, I mean, you have that. It's a plus plus pitch. Then you've got a slider that's also pretty devastating. And he's dabbling with a change up. And I think we probably hear that a lot during spring training for a lot of different players. But He's kind of the exception to the rule of can you succeed in the big leagues with really just two pitches and kind of a show me pitch, I guess, every once in a while is the third one. I think that he can. Number one, he wants to be healthy. That oblique injury that sidelined him for three, four weeks leading into the playoffs. He was not himself against Philadelphia in that last start. He's going to be looking to put that behind him. So he's going to come in highly motivated. And oh, yeah, like I mentioned earlier, the Braves were very motivated to keep him around for a long time. And he was the first pitcher in this line of extensions to be given that uh, that big contract. So I think the Braves are looking to build around him. And as somebody who did things strikeout wise that uh, many of us have never seen in our lifetime, or at least if you have, you can count it on one hand with the Randy Johnsons and maybe Roger Clemens and Doc Goodens of the world. This is a very exciting player. And I think that he could lead the national league, maybe the major leagues and strikeouts. Maybe that'll be my bold prediction for this year. Spencer Strider, <laughs> strikeout leader. I don't know that I'm going too far out on a limb, but if he's healthy, I don't know too many guys that can challenge him. Grant, when you look at the Braves, they are the favorites to win the division at plus 110, where the Mets are plus 170, the second favorite. But I I was trying to find a weakness with this Braves club. And I I, I and I thought, I don't, I don't know what, what what what's stronger. Is it that rotation? Is it the is it the lineup? I where is the one area where you say, okay, this might be an area where the Atlanta can improve upon because they are strong across the board. Yeah, I really feel like shortstop was the big question coming into spring training. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that having Orlando R.C. at shortstop batting ninth is something that will keep the Braves from winning the division because I just don't believe that that's the case because the rest of the lineup, starting with Ronald Acuna Jr. at the top, Matt Olson, Austin Riley, you've got a catching tandem of Sean Murphy and Travis Darno. You've got the rookie of the year, Michael Harris, coming into his second and first full big league season. And on down the list, I think a resurgent Eddie Rosario could be a big deal. And I, I tweeted this out yesterday. The Braves got 28 total home runs from Ronald Acuna Jr., Ozzie Albies, and Eddie Rosario last year. I think that trio could triple that number. So when you do think about losing some offense with Dansby Swanson, yeah, you can look at that on on one hand. But on the other hand, if you get some resurgent years from some of these players that you already have in-house, this is a club that could be, and I believe will be, a better offensive team than they were a year ago. So I don't see any glaring holes lineup-wise. They've got really good bullpen depth as well. And you mentioned the rotation led by Max Fried, Spencer Strider. Kyle Wright was the only 20-game winner in the majors last year. And then your fourth starters, Charlie Morton, who's a postseason horse. 
You can figure out that fifth starter role, and I know they're going to do that as well. They've got Michael Soroka on the mound on Wednesday. They remain hopeful that at just 25 years old, he's going to be able to finally navigate his way through the injuries that have kept him off the field. But depth-wise, talent-wise, this Braves team is incredibly good. And if we know anything about Alex Anthopoulos, he is not afraid to do some dabbling in the trade market and add to a club to get them the needs that they have in season. I totally forgot about Soroka. That guy was amazing when he was healthy. So add him to the mix. That's even better. But listen, the Braves aren't sneaking up on anybody. They are the favorites to win their division. They are 4-1 to to win the National League, which is the favorites, and only behind the Astros uh, to win the World Series. So do you think these odds are correct? Do you think the ceiling is the World Series for the Braves? I really do. And I know that they had, you know, desires to get there last year. And they had a team that, I mean, you look at what they had to do to march from 10 and a half games back in the division after the first couple of months. And even in the second half, they were falling behind at times because the Mets, they didn't exactly, you know, just, just roll over and die in the division either. Two teams in the NL East won 101 games. Now, will that happen again? I don't know. But the Mets are good enough, I think, on paper, which is where the game is not played. To win 90-95 games, I think the Braves are a 95-win team as well. So I expect them to fight it out this year to figure out who's going to win the NL East. But until you get knocked off that perch, the Braves, I think, are the team to beat in the division. And I still think they're the team to beat in the National League. All due respect to the Phillies, who were the third-place team in the NL East, that went all the way to the World Series. So it's going to be a good division. I do think the Braves are the best-equipped, the best-constructed team. And hopefully, if they continue to play the way they have the last five years, they're a club that also finds a way to win more times than not and has that October experience. So when you add up all the X factors, I feel like the Braves have it right where they want it. Now they got to go out there and execute. He is the Braves reporter for 92.9 The Game in Atlanta and also host of the Locked on Atlanta video on YouTube you want to check out as well. That is Grant McCauley. Grant, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Really enjoyed it.